Ebro in the morning. Uh, Laura Styles had to run out. Rosenberg is here. And my brother, Mitchell S. Jackson. Yeah. You know what I mean? Pul- Pulitzer Prize winning yeah. author. Sounds. An actual friend of mine. Yeah. Like an actual friend. Right, right, right. Not a friend of the show. Not a friend no, of the no, show. No, He's a friend of the show now. He's been on what, three times? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, trust me, I know y'all are real friends. They were just reminiscing <laughs> random things about people on the West Coast, friends, <laughs> children. You know, was, they were was, going deep. I was yeah. like, oh, okay. They're yeah. friends, friends. Yeah. No, it's yeah. friends, friends. Uh, I know Mitch for a long time uh, when uh, he first started leaning into becoming an author. Yeah. Um, and now you've, how many books? This is four. Fourth book. Yeah. Uh, it's called, and I think everybody out there, something is great. It's a great gift for the holidays, too. If you have a NBA fan in your house, uh, it's called Basketball Fashion. It's called Fly. And it breaks out basketball fashion into uh, some some interesting groups I never even thought about. Break this down for us. Yeah, so I, I chose Ayers because um, I didn't think just doing it by decades. You know, I kind of got caught up in the NBA 50, NBA 75, but I was like, ah, uh, decades don't really mark anything specifically. And so I was thinking, well, what does? So I started thinking, oh, maybe it should be Ayers, and then thinking, okay, well, what defines an error? So sometimes it's something social, sometimes it's something political, sometimes, sometimes it's something cultural. And I was just looking back at the span of the NBA going, okay, what marks this first era, right? The NBA started in 49 uh, and thinking, man, that's pre-civil rights, you know? So there was a lot of pressure to conform if you were black and still a lot of conformity if you, even in the, in the white guys in the league. So yeah, the you first, wasn't really doing some outspoken fashion. No. It was a job. Yes. They were just do a job and dress up. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. And thinking what were the social pressures, right? Like in uh, World War II, they had, you know, conservation mandates. Like you can only wear a certain amount of rubber in your shoes. You can only use a certain kind of fabric. So that really kind of dictated what you were able to wear. Mm. Yeah. Who's the, who do you regard, as I look right now and get to the era one, 1946 to 1963, yep. who do you regard as the first person, the first player to have any style, to really try to have any Ooh, style? I don't think it's in that. Uh, conformist era, I think it's. it's oh, really? The, it's not yeah, till the next era. It's the next era, and I and I note that as as uh, I call it flamboyance. Uh, so it's like the 1970s. Really, I, I mark that as like civil rights, right? When when black people feel liberated from being a spokesperson from their race or a credit to your race. Mm-hmm. Um, 64 to 80. Yes. Well, yeah. and in there you go, and, and specifically in there is the afro, the hair. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Right, because that was you know for those that don't know. Wearing your natural hair as a black person yes. was as rebellious as you could be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah. even to this day, like, and I'm going to ask you about your Kaepernick article you yeah. recently wrote. Uh, but that was the whole thing with Cap. He wore the fro. Yeah. yeah. And it sent people, it's, to this day, an afro <laughs> sends people into a tizzy. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. In what, in what way do you mean? Well, both sides. You have black folks that are like, yo, why are you still rocking that? Or why are you rocking that? Or yeah. do, some, do something with that. Yeah. Then on the other side, you have mainstream society that see it as kind of like this, yo, what are you trying to say? Yeah. Right, right, right. It represents a time of like, you know, activism and, out, and outspokenness. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yo, so, oh, so that's what type of time you want it's you're almost a like panther. a yeah yeah you a black panther <laughs> but by the way it is built in too it happens naturally right like now it's so built in that when you see someone with a really big fro yeah you're like oh they got to be trying to prove a point right oh now. yeah for yeah. sure right it's a it's, statement it's, yeah. it's a statement piece yeah like you're like yes, you know definitely oh by the way i shouldn't be surprised uh-huh. that the the first you see willis <laughs> reed off top yeah yeah i know it's only a matter of time before we get to clyde frazier you know what's i mean he may be the king of the whole thing pages. Before we get, get to the to real him. deal, there's Daryl Dawkins. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, here we go. There you go. You got Wilt showing full cleavage here. Man, Wilt. <laughs> yo, his chest plate. Will, yo, Will had his old taco meat chest plate. Will, Will, Will was on them push ups. But Clyde, <laughs> but Clyde Frazier, man, yeah. getting after with the hat, the yeah. vest. Yeah. I mean, uh, that's. Uh, he got a cape on, man. Like, He's wearing that's a cape. Know, that's 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 wow. James Brown right there. Well, in that flamboyance era of, uh, and you know, you had these black athletes yeah. who were heroes to yes. their communities Absolutely. that they come from, and to be able to ascend as a black person to a a professional athlete. Yes. B, you're on television. Yes. Yeah. You're being yeah. interviewed. Yes. You're in the cover of the newspaper. Yeah. Right. Like that was. And not because there was a problem. Right, right. Because yeah. you did something that was yeah. seen by mainstream society as remarkable. Yeah. Right? What 
what other than that was just what was going on in black neighborhoods, which was to wear outfits that mark your identity. Yeah. What was going on with the players? Was it just them trying to make sure that they saw or that the community knew that they understood what was going on? I mean, I think there's some of that. I think, you know, if you guys, if you come out of the hood, these guys came out of hoods where, you know, the hustlers were still the guys in the neighborhood with some bread. And, and they're really, I mean, he's dressing like a hustler, right? you know, of the 1970s. So I think there was some of that. I also think that these guys recognize they're not just star, they're heroes, right? Like they're doing something heroic every game. Um, and I think that what do you dress like if you're a hero? That's you put a cape on with a Zorro hat. Exactly. Yeah. It's also interesting, too, because through sports, you're able to see a microcosm of how I see uh, black folks and white folks handling things differently in general. Yes. Like, you know, I grew up in the suburbs yeah. and, and the white kids just generally just dress like trash. Yes. <laughs> like they, there's no need. Yeah. The ones that come from means yeah. feel no need to have style. Yes. You know, lacrosse shorts and a t-shirt and flip flops yeah. yeah. because you have, you already have. Yeah. And you see it in, in sports too. You'll see the yeah. white players a lot of times don't have a style. <laughs> yeah. They just wear whatever they're. Yeah. Except Tyler Hero. Right. Well, Tyler Hero, though, is trying. He's trying to keep up with the black players. Yes. If you're a white player with style, you're basically trying to keep up with your black compadres. Well, those are your friends. Those and are your friends. That's who where you came from. But right. you learned it from them. You yeah. know what I mean? And so it is interesting now to look all the way back, and mm -hmm. you can see that. And you have you have Larry Bird in the book. Yes. You know, who's right. basically, as you said, he's wearing bowling shirts, basically, yeah, at that yeah, time. And sure. then here you have Kareem. Yes, a dashiki. Go, going know, full long, dashiki. Yep. But then on the, on the, on the opposite page of Kareem, you have Julius Irving yes. just dressing of the time, yeah. wearing wearing a pair casual of pair of bell bottoms and a ring t-shirt. Yep. Ring collar t-shirt. Yeah. It really is interesting too, man. I I I you really do see the times come out through these Absolutely. outfits. Yeah, yeah. I, I think there's a great picture of Dr. J. For me, I mean, I, I know we're in New York and a lot of people, I mean, certainly you have to mention Clyde Frazier as one of the pioneers, but for me, if I had to pick one person, it's Dr. J. Really? And I say that because Dr. J's style evolved, mm. right? Like you look at him there, he got bell bottoms but on, here he got he is the with Casio the... watch, the big fro. And look at Dr. J now, tailor suit, short hair. And if you look at Walt Clyde Frazier, he's, stuck. he's still doing what he was doing, a version of what he was doing in 76. Wow, that's really interesting. But Dr. Yeah. J, yeah, he's now I think of adult Dr. J for yeah. the last 25 years. Exactly. Yeah, he's wearing suits yeah. and... and, and Interesting. Yeah, like almost it's almost like Clyde became a caricature. Yeah, yeah. Right. And, Yo, and, then, and then also was like, I ain't buy all these clothes and not keep recycling. <laughs> Y'all gonna keep seeing these I jackets these and suits. suits. You know what I'm saying? You gonna see these. You gonna see these. <laughs> Yo, but look at Phil Jackson, yeah. The Zen master being what you'd expect with the overalls yep. and the Strange now because he made those comments what last year about protests and mm -hmm. basketball. By the way, he 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 honestly very quietly mm -hmm. has been one of the great disappointments to me mm. in, in sports. Mm -hmm. Like I I heard him on Rick Rubin's podcast, mm -hmm. and yeah, he's like, you you sort of assumed he was this great progressive because he had an understanding of Zen and his, yeah. but then you hear him talk and you're like, you you're stuck, you sound stuck, yeah. you sound like, yeah, yeah, it really like and th like listen, I guess there's a way. <laughs> Nah, I don't even understand what yeah. I tried to follow where he was going, and I was like, "Well, right. it's it's indicative of individuals who want to be progressive in some way, but you know, black and brown people have been dehumanized so much that people look right over them yeah. as an issue that I need to even look at as a human one or a progressive one. Some people, mm -hmm. not right. all people, but it's almost like, oh yeah, yeah, that's just them over there. Yeah. Even with the LGBT community, it's kind of like, eh. yeah. yeah, I don't feel like uh, it. I don't feel like having to understand what they're going through. But he was annoyed. If we don't know what we're talking about. Phil Jackson was annoyed with the NBA putting, quote, political messages yeah. in the game. Yeah. As an old Vietnam protester, too, right? Yeah, like, so I don't... it doesn't make sense. And by the way, like, what they do, they have... They had things that said Black Lives Matter, yeah. or, and what's the other thing? I think they switched it. I don't think it's Black Lives Matter anymore. I think it's like, and racism. I've seen and racism. Oh yeah, a lot of and racism because yeah. yeah. Black Lives Matter as it became an official group and got politicized more. They changed it to other things. Yeah. But all of it is just good messaging. And right. to me, actually, it's it's actually impactful. It's in a place right. where. You know, like, we sort of laugh at the, like, end racism in the end zone of a football game. And yeah. I get it because you do think they are just kind of checking a box. Yeah. But at the same time, they are showing that message to people who need to see it. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, there yeah. is a value to that. Absolutely. And why does that affect basketball at all? Like, it doesn't change the game at all. At all. But think about, Phil, 
he never, like, I mean, he had Jordan, right? Then he had Kobe and Shaq. None of those guys were very outwardly political. Mm -mm. No. None of the players that he coached to greatness took political stances. Mm -hmm. And I know it was a different league, and it was harder to do that in that day, but, like, think about that. that like, what if he was coaching LeBron? Right, like it would. We might have seen. What if this he was earlier. coaching Mahmoud Abdul Rauf? Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. Were any of his uh, compadres on the Knicks outspoken at that time? Uh, well, Bill Bradley ended Bill Bradley, up becoming right. a, a, a senator, right? Yeah. So he must have had some political. But, but again, it, but, you couldn't say it. But back remember, then. back right. then the political statement was the Afro. Right, that true. was the statement. Yeah. Yeah. The outfit was the statement. Yeah, yeah. The fashion true. was the statement. Yeah. Right. It that's wasn't as if do. people were on Instagram. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Or, you know, and, and I think the media was even more controlled then. They weren't yeah. asking them about yeah. political questions. Yes. Which makes um, that Cleveland Summit, which there's a picture in there, right, yep. with Jim Brown. Yeah. Uh, um, Kareem. Kareem. Yeah, yeah. Um, makes that really that much more remarkable that those guys in the 60s, Right, took that kind of Muhammad Ali took that kind of political stance. Well, and said media come right, come, come listen yeah. to what we have to say. We have something that's important that needs to be talked yeah, about. Yeah, definitely. Yo, Moses Malone looks like a man. cool ass MF right man, here, look man. At the checkerboard. Ooh, this this Moses. is fire, bro. And also, <laughs> I didn't know this is my favorite picture. Yo, I didn't know Pistol Pete was uh man, was that kind of dude. I was on a plane yesterday or two days ago with a guy who went to school with Pistol Pete. Mm. And he told me a story. He said at the beginning of LSU games, they would dim all the lights and Pistol Pete would come on the court and they would say, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Pete Maravich will do a dribbling exposition, ex exhibition and he would do all this fancy shit like Kyrie shit before the LSU games. Just I had a no stunt. Idea. Just yeah. a stunt. I had no idea, man. Wow. Yeah. Now, Pistol Pete, when you really think about it, is kind of the first cool yeah. white boy. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, like there I was didn't know that. He averaged 50 without a three-point line. I know he was a ball. I know yeah. he was a hooper. Yeah. I knew that. I didn't you didn't know, know he was cool like I didn't know no. he was swagged out. Me neither. But think about now when you think about it, his name was Pistol Pete. Yeah. <laughs> like, we probably should have put it together. Right. <laughs> Look, the book is fly. Uh, oh, there's a proper fashion. hippie. I'm sorry to cut you off. There's a proper hippie. Yes. Sorry, Phil. Yes. A guy who's still on it. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bill Walton. Bill yes. Walton ain't playing with you. Portland, by Portland. the way. Portland. 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 Of yes. course. Yes. <laughs> Big Oregon move. Yeah. Big Oregon vibes. Big Oregon vibes. Yo, and look at Wes Unsell with the fro and the jacket. Yeah. That was my coach. I grew up in D.C., so Wes okay. Unsell was the man. Yeah. Well, and also, if you're feeling what Rosenberg's feeling right now and you don't have his book, that's why I said it'll make a great holiday gift if you have like this a is big, fun. Yeah. big this basketball is fun. fan to go back this and, is fun, and look at man. outfits. Yeah. Um, so how did this come about? Um, my editor at Esquire uh, is friends with the publisher of Artisan and... Uh, Brought the idea to me, man, and it just made sense. You know, I, you know, I played college basketball. I, I love fashion. I mean, so, did you play college basketball? Man, listen, go check it. <laughs> I averaged twenty two no, my last did, year at JUCO. Did. You did. Um, that's real. You played. Shout out to our boy K Dub that took. Uh, that's right. Yo, let, Rosenberg, my boy K Dub uh, went to the Final Four. Who was he playing? Bakersfield. They, nah, they won two national championships. They, they won two, two na division two national championships. Two, division two, but they yes. went to the. They went to the Final Four, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 with the Division One. No, no, no. That was Division Two. That was Division Two. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Yeah, I just got to hit the A-yo for the Dennis Rodman section. Just everyone, yeah. you know, just know there's a big A-yo <laughs> right in the middle of this book. A-yo. Yeah. And, and also, God, God did the early 90s Jordan era not age well. Man. Considering what a no, fact. that's back, though. What did you say? That's back. Look at Shy Gilgis Alexander. He's wearing that size of silhouette. I wish y'all the best with it. <laughs> well, he's wearing that jacket. Rosenberg. Or the whole outfit. Too? You didn't wear, you you didn't have no 5XT? No. No. It, you that, never had no, a baggy jeans. I wore okay, baggy jeans. No, 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 no. Because no, the suits is a different yo, level. Yo, Mitch. look how nuts. The, the early 2000s suit era. How is that different from Hove in Hard they, Like Life Tour? They look horrible, but they look horrible. No, we're not saying it's this is worse than. Yeah. We're saying it's. All bad. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas, like, you go back to the 70s and 60s, yeah. and you see the crazy-ish they were doing, but it still looks fire. Yeah. These this huge suits, fire. nah, this never. <laughs> and it's crazy because Jordan was such an icon with his athletic fashion. Yes, yes. But his, I mean, you've, I'm sure you've Googled Michael Jordan jeans before. Yes, The yes, man yes. cannot wear a pair of jeans. <laughs> he tough. liked the high-waisted jeans, yeah. He but favors. I guess, what do you do when your legs are that long with jeans? You kind of look well, nuts no matter what you do. I was going to stay six, six, 
Six six, six, and up. six, six, yeah. That's Jeans tough. tough. You better hard. just wear long shorts and what call you, it what a day. What are you wearing? A, a 36, 36? <laughs> yeah, it looks insane. 36 length? <laughs> Yeah, that's so wild. In scene 40. <laughs> what are you wearing? No, nah, that's crazy. What are you wearing? No, nah, these jackets was OD, bro. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the Steve, we call him the Steve Harvey well, listen, suit. man, we done all went through some eras of fashion, man. Oh, look, I, man. I can remember look, man, cross 1999 colors. Ebro. Yeah, cross colors was a problem. Yeah. I didn't have cross colors in yeah. 99. Yo, I like yeah. this page, too. Here's a... I'll be sure... Photos. Nah, I didn't have no I'll be sure. Oh, I did in the 90s, yes. in the late 80s. This is like a, then you have, this looks like a late 80s or 90, 91. Yeah. And you have Magic, Isaiah, and Larry. Yes. All wearing a similar look. Yes. They, they, they went to like the adults. The dad, yeah, they went to like, the dad. This is a Bill Cosby effect. Yes. They <laughs> all are rocking the sweater with like a, a little collar shirt underneath. Yeah. That's fat. Oh, and then of course, the classic Magic photo in the fur coat, which everyone is uh, now memes, shared, memes, yeah. And they share it as a fake photo with yeah. Tyson and Madonna. Yeah. This is the real photo the of real Magic deal. just in the fur coat. Gotta have You saw how Mitch tried to take shots at my late 90s fashion with my friends. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 I, I let it. him slide. I let no, him slide, though. Because I wasn't even going to talk about how he's been wearing blue suede shoes and ascots at the wrong... And we'd be like, bro, why are you so dressed up? We're just at a bar. He'll have a full ascot You, go, you went full ascot, huh? Maybe, maybe. No, nah, don't lie, bro. Yo, we be killing... Yo, Mitch be funny dressing. Go to his IG. I'm about to look right now. That's Hold why on. his editor at Esquire was like, I need you to do this book because you're the only person who dressed crazy enough to cover this. Yeah. <laughs> He's dressing modest today. I know. It's but he will wear hard bottoms, some too short shorts, some suit socks, not, and an no, ascot. No. Not the suit socks. <laughs> Not the suit, not with the suit the socks with the suit shorts. Socks with the shorts. With the hard bottoms and shorts. My man will do it. Wow. This is my friend. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, nah, it's a problem. <laughs> um, speaking of Esquire, uh, most recently, um, also you had the article that went viral yeah. with Colin Kaepernick. Yes, yes. And the headline was. Uh, I can't remember. Colin Kaepernick, exactly. Kaepernick, Kaepernick already won. Yes, yeah, he, he already won. won. Yeah. 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 Um, which was controversial because you yeah. see the kind of people won what he ain't won. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Would love to know about how that article came about. Yeah. Uh, same person who brought the Ahmaud Arbery story to me, brought this book idea to me, brought that to me. It was for Men's, men's Health. Um, and initially, I was going to interview him, and then Colin's not doing um, uh, interviews. And so I was like, okay, man, uh, well, let me write him a letter. Because I want to be able to, like, speak intimately to him. And, and when I think, when you think about the epistolary form, you're, like, allowing another person to hear an intimate conversation. And so, I mean, the first thing I start off with is thank you. You know, like I, I, I'm indebted to you for making me see, think uh, in, in places that I wouldn't ordinarily do that. And, um, yeah, man, it was just great to be able to talk to him. We've since been connected, you know, trying to figure out when we're going to sit down and rap. But, man, he seemed like a solid dude to me. And no, he's a good guy. Yeah. I definitely love what he's doing. Um, now, the winning part. What yeah. is he, when you say he's already won, yeah. well, for I people who didn't read the article. He has made... And he's an icon. He's not a star. He's like, we're going to be talking about him for as long as we have an American memory of history. And, and, and in that sense, like, even if he would have become a Super Bowl champion, right, or two, like, nobody's talking about Doug Williams. No, whoa, 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 whoa. Yo, he just kind of accidentally I, I, throws crazy <laughs> shots <laughs> every way. He's not a shot, but, you know, we know talk about him in the context of football. Yes, yes. You know, first he was the first black Super Bowl right, champion quarterback. Right, right. But how we're not having that no. conversation all the time. We are having, you can't even you can't even talk about what's happening, anything politically. You cannot talk about that outside of Kaepernick. No, you can't. Right? Every, everything that happened in 2020, Yeah. He he's a precursor he's a to so much, such a framing for yeah. it. Yeah, so for that, I mean, you That's won. That's what he set out. He what out. He set out to make it a combo. I don't think he set out to do it. Right. I think he could not have imagined yeah. what was going to happen. And that's something I write in there. Like, I don't think you could have imagined. And I also don't know the kind of personal turmoil you've gone through. And the thing and, that and I, whether were there and whether there were nights when you, you know, questioned it, <laughs> you were laying in bed like, I just wish I was still around playing yeah. football. This is well, a clearly lot. he wishes he was still playing football. Right. That right. part exists. Yeah. But I'm sure he's very proud of the. You know what he's done, yeah. also, but that's a huge trick. That's yeah. a real sacrifice. I write that in the letter, man. Like every time, and it was prior to this recent releasing of the letter. It was like every time I see you release a letter or go on an interview and say, like, yeah, I really wish I was back. It hurts not because I don't think you deserve it or you mean it or you're worthy, but because I know them people are just gonna use that as a way to show you what white power looks like, mm -hmm. and uh, that that hurts to see a person who genuinely wants to do a thing. And they're sending a message back that, like, it don't matter what you want to do or how good you are. Well, and, and it's 
you know, uh, with everything going on in the world right now while yeah. we're having this conversation, yeah. and you say <clears throat> to the establishment, yeah, people who look like me are being killed and picked apart by a, by a localized government funded military force. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're trapped in neighborhoods. We're dying in many different ways, both emotionally yeah. and physically, and being put in cages. Right to millions of us are in cage. Yeah. And I want to make sure that that's not lost. And I want to say something. Exactly. The idea that you could sac you're sacrificing your income. Yeah. To do that in a country that wants to run around the planet and tell everybody else what, what they're supposed do. to be doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Colin sacrificed so much more than income because his income is going to be all right, right? Yeah. Like Colin's found a way. He's yeah. producing things. I'm sure. I'm sure Colin and Ness are doing just fine. Yeah. But he sacrificed much more yeah, because yeah. that that dream. Yeah. When athletes retire at close to forty, Man, Tom Brady. Hard. Tom Had Brady right now. Time walking away. Yeah. He's probably right now at night, like, oh. Yeah. He keeps saying, I might come back. The other, <laughs> Colin had to cut it off. It, like, you know, late 20s or something. All of a sudden, after yeah. you'd been on top of the world. Yeah. You know, and people forget, like, there's a narrative that he couldn't play anymore. Yeah. You right. know, that he had turmoil in San Francisco there at the end, and obviously yeah. things had gone left. But if you really look at it, his last season, yeah. he 100%. Listen, I don't know if Colin goes on to be a Hall of Famer. Yeah. I don't know if he goes on to eventually win a Super Bowl. Yeah. I know one thing. Yeah. He was getting he, more jobs. He had right? plenty more yeah, jobs. Yeah, yeah, I definitely. mean, plenty more jobs. <laughs> yeah, so, sure. like, that level of sacrifice to give up that dream, if someone came to me or Ebro and said, yeah. your voice is no longer usable, yeah. it's done. Yeah. You know, like, and we've gotten to do it already for way longer than Colin right. got to do it. It's just, it's an incredible sacrifice. And I, I, I really was viscerally angry at people questioning him writing the letter yeah. and insulting him for doing so yeah. you know and, and and saying that because he criticized the league mm -hmm. and has pointed out the plantation like things about it yeah he shouldn't get to play in the league yeah. when the results of what he did yeah. have already made that league better that's true that's Why true. should he not get to play in the right. league we don't get that no he made be him. better? Right. That's right. not happening without him. That's say true. it again for the people. What did you just say? We don't get... We don't get hove without him. We don't Facts. get hove doing the Super Bowl show without Kaepernick, which means we ain't getting Usher. We ain't getting Rihanna. You know, maybe, but... Dr. Line, Dre and, yeah, and, Dr. and Dre, all Kendrick. of this stuff that's yeah. happened. And, and also, and, and, the, and racism in the end zone. Yeah. And the all of the things that have been done. Um, the protection of players is different. Yeah. He, everything that he did yeah. has changed this league. And why shouldn't he get to reach out and say, hey, can I just be a backup somewhere? Yeah. Well, well, and they love recently, I don't know if you guys have been watching, their new favorite thing is the amount of black quarterbacks that are starting in the Super oh, Bowl. Yeah. What, and the amount of black quarterbacks that are taken incredibly seriously. Cap is the end of the era. Yeah. You know, Cap, RG3, Russell Wilson. Yeah. That era is different now yeah. than if you're going to be Caleb Williams next year. Right. You know, things have changed a lot just Jay, in that Jalen time. Hurts is doing. Yeah. Ja yeah, yeah no one questions Jalen Hurts. Yeah. That's you know? True. So it's. Um, it's unfortunate, man. It's very it took unfortunate. That man's life, life from him, really. Major sacrifice, but yeah. it was an amazing article you wrote, and that's yeah. in Men's Health. If yeah, people Men's who Health, missed yeah. it, uh, this is Mitchell Ash Jackson. Follow Go get this him. book; it's dope, um, man. Even though he dresses crazy, he's my friend, and we love him, and he made a dope book. So give it up for him, man. Thank Yo, Mitchell Jackson, making us proud.